Sir Topham Hatt's engines like to look clean, bright, and shiny. They love being washed down and having their brass polished until it gleams. James was in the workshop being repainted. He was beside himself with joy. James thought being repainted meant he was special. The workmen painted and polished for hour upon hour. Then with new paint shining, Brass twinkling and blacking black, James returned to Tidmouth Sheds. Look, aren't I a beautiful red? He asked the others. No wonder Sir Topham Hat thinks I'm special. But Percy was worried. He wasn't being repainted, and he wasn't red. Does this mean Sir Topham Hat doesn't think I'm special? He asked. Looking splendid is not the same as being really useful, said Thomas firmly. But best of all is being really useful and looking splendid, like me, said James cheerfully. Before Thomas could say anything else, James closed his eyes and fell happily asleep. The next morning, all the engines were very busy. Percy was working at the coal plant. Thomas and Emily were taking passengers up and down the branch lines. Gordon was pulling the express. Sir Topham Hatt came to see James. He told him to join Percy at the coal plant at once. The coal cars must reach Brendam docks before the boat sails, so no dilly-dallying, he said. Yes, sir, said James, and he set off at once. But James didn't go straight to the coal plant. He decided to go by the canal instead. Then he could see himself in the water for yard after yard after yard. Magnificent, he puffed. James had forgotten what Sir Topham Hatt had said. At the coal yard, Percy was working as hard as he could. But he was falling behind. The line of coal cars was getting longer and longer. And the yard manager was getting crosser and crosser. Where could James be? James was still enjoying himself, but there was no one around to share his fun, so he headed for Wellsworth Station. But as James pulled into Wellsworth Station, Gordon and the Express were pulling out. The passengers had gone. Bother, said James. He was disappointed, and he left the station. James headed straight for the branch lines. James saw Thomas. Look at me, he puffed. Don't I look fine? You should be at work, called Thomas. But James didn't listen to Thomas. James was enjoying being James. But Percy wasn't enjoying being Percy. He was trying his hardest, but the troublesome trucks were being very naughty. Poor Percy was almost worn out. What will happen to the order now? cried the yard manager. When James rolled into the coal plant, it was late in the afternoon. Percy was cross. So was the yard manager. To make up for lost time, he said, you must take an extra long line of coal cars to the docks. James was delighted. The docks were always bustling with engines and people. 
It's the place to be seen, he said. The troublesome trucks are being very naughty, warned Percy. But James still wasn't listening. James puffed along, looking forward to being seen. But the troublesome trucks were naughtier than ever. They rocked and rolled and crashed and bashed. James's face was soon covered in soot. Going downhill, the troublesome trucks wiggled and giggled. James had to put his brakes on with a jolt. Cole tumbled out of the troublesome trucks, landing on James. James was cross and biffed the troublesome trucks as hard as he could. More coal flew out. Now James didn't want to be seen. He was as dirty as he had ever been. But on his way to the docks, he kept passing his friends. He passed Emily. And Edward. And Thomas. Thomas thought the only red thing left on James was his face. James trundled into Brendam Docks. He hoped no one would see him. But Gordon was at the docks with the express. He could not believe his eyes. He thought James was the grubbiest, grimiest, dustiest, dirtiest engine he had ever seen. Percy arrived safely with the last of the coal cars. I like your new coat of paint, he puffed cheekily. You do look splendid. James knew he should have listened. He didn't feel splendid anymore. But for the first time all day, James could hear clearly. He could hear the sound of the troublesome trucks giggling at him. And despite feeling foolish, even James had to smile.